Welcome back, friends, to a very chilly Wednesday morning on the tiny forest here. We're so tiny today that uh, this is the only saw I brought was my little husky top handle. But what's not tiny is <laughs> we're going to be uh, trying something new today. So normally when we skid logs, you know, so I was thinking when I was walking through here how I wanted to lay everything out. I hate to have multiple fires going on in one spot because the fire makes a big mess and I already have everything out here. And I actually need all of the poles for the fence out here as well. So I thought, well, let's do it like the big boys do it, but just on a tiny scale. Uh, let's see if we can skid everything up here, limit here by the fire, then the limbs go in the fire and then the poles can be sorted for whether they're horizontals or vertical members, right? So. I'm gonna show you some knots uh, today. I'm gonna show you how to work with some ropes. Uh, I've never skidded with uh, the Honda. The trees we don't have are not too big, so it shouldn't be a problem, uh, but it is frozen today. We woke up to 22 degrees, I think it was, with a sheet of ice on everything. I couldn't hardly get Mrs. W's car door open. So let me show you the gear we're gonna use, and then we'll uh, get to work and see how the, the Pioneer does as a uh, as a uh, micro skidder. Well, I guess we'll start at the power plant here. <laughs> this is the Honda 2020 uh, 700. Uh, it's got locking differentials front and rear. We'll need those today, I think, when we need to do some pulling. And we'll be, it's got a two inch trailer hit receiver um, that comes from the factory this way. So I've got a, uh, uh, a shackle here. When you are pulling, you know, we don't want to use trailer balls. As we know, trailer balls can slip off. Uh, trailer balls can break. The way that they're designed, they're not designed to take that sort of shear. So you always want to pull with one of these. You guys better off, rather than use your trailer ball, if you need to pull someone out, to use your trailer pin and put your cable inside there. For our line, we're going to be using this. Uh, this is a 5 8 static braided rope. Being static means it has no stretch in it whatsoever. There's different types of ropes. There's dynamic and static. Where you want a dynamic rope would be, for example, a rock climber, right? Where you want that rope to be kind of stretchy. So when you fall, you don't have a, a harsh jerk, but that doesn't work very good for other things like rappelling or pulling heavy equipment. You want a, a static rope, one that doesn't have any stretch in it. So to connect this, so we don't have to continue to tie knot after knot after knot. We're gonna use this old thing I found in an antique store, I believe. I don't remember where I got this actually. Uh, it's kind of a rope biter right there. So how it works is that this will be connected to the Honda and then as we back up, we need to get a bite. We'll hook onto the rope with this. This is the theory anyway. And what's cool about these is the harder you pull with them, the, the stronger the bite. And I've used it with this nice rope and it doesn't seem to damage it at all. So that's where we're hooked on from there. And then we'll use uh, some sort of a sacrificial piece on the log itself as well as snatch blocks and pulleys because we're gonna to to be changing directions because yarding a 50 foot tree through a forest is a problem, right? Because all the other trees. So you have to change, be able to change directions and uh, that's simply done with what they call a snatch block or some people call it just a block is used uh, to change direction with cable up and down, left and right, north and south, whatever. And how it works is that you swivel these open, you lay your cable or your rope inside of this, and now we can change direction and pull at a 90 degree if it's more advantageous for us.
Let's see if we can't take these twins out together here. So I'm just going to use, normally you'd use cable for this because this isn't super abrasion resistant, but this is pretty small scale stuff. So I think we'll be okay. So we'll use this. We, we can hook both of these in a simple kind of a slip configuration so that when we pull, it pulls them tight together like this. Grab as far down as you can at the bottom, but remember, you get too close, it's not gonna wanna, you know, it's gonna slip off there on you. Now to connect our choker to our bowl line, here we'll use a, a shackle. Now you wanna avoid connecting ropes together, rope to rope if you can. Some abrasion problems there. So this is the way to go here. Okay, so now to connect the bowl line, bowl line, B-U-L-L, -L, we're gonna use a bowline. This is, of all knots, this is the king of knots. Right here, this is, if you only know one knot, this is the one you want to know how to tie. Uh, because it's just so handy for so many things and you can, do pra with practice, you can do it one-handed. So to make your bowline, you just, oh, you throw a loop, right? You throw a loop in your line. You go back through that loop around the main line and then back through itself right there's your there's your bowling make sure you dress it get my gloves on here dress it up so it's tight so the nice thing about the bowling is it gives you ability to put a loop in a line uh, and no matter how tight you hard you pull on it you'll always be able to get it untied And this little pondo pine here is going to help us to do just that. You can get great deals on these old rigging straps from eBay. There's uh, rigging companies that have to have everything certified. So if it doesn't pass because it's got a little abrasion or something in it, they can't use it. And they uh, usually give them away or sell them on eBay. So for this sort of thing, you know, where it's not life safety, you're not lifting items over top of guys, then uh, it's just fine. Very challenging light today, guys. The sun's coming in and out of the clouds. It's almost impossible to compensate for. So next we'll grab the line coming from our load or from our choker. And this is where you, you go through your block. Right, so these swivel, all of them will open in various ways here. And we'll connect this to our tree strap with another shackle. Now we get to use our cool rope biter. go through all three of these. Is that going to fit through there? Oh man, it's not, is it? How about this? Does a pin go through? Let's see. I guess we could do it that way, huh? No? Well, we got problems now. I guess I could hook it directly onto the pin in there. How am I going to do this here? I know how to do it. I got a soft shackle. Now we're cooking with gas. There's no problems, only solutions, right? All right, we can put this guy back in. All right, soft shackles are nice because they don't tear stuff up. Looks kind of phallic, doesn't it? I wonder why, who decided on the pink. All right, now we can go through here. And this will solve our problems. Voila. Now from the choker to the pulley, or the block to the rope biter here. Now we're good. Now see, if we have a short run to pull, you know, we don't have to keep tying knots, right? Over and over again, we can just back up and get a, another bite. You know, just like the old, the guy used to use his mule 
you know, just back and forth, back and forth. Well, that didn't go exactly as planned, but we got it done. We got it to where we wanted to go. Now we'll just take the snatch block out of the loop, come back and uh, get another bite of the rope, and then pull it up where we want them to be. Well, there we have it, guys. <laughs> Are we LARPing out here or what? <laughs> this is some very small scale logging. And of course, that's not entirely necessary. You know, being stuff that small, we could have easily cut it in place, but we're having fun, right? And the it's the same principle, it really is. I mean, this is legitimately the exact same thing as process wise uh, as, as a, a, a big logging operation would go through, just on a very small scale. You know, it's just, there's not a lot that has changed. I think of the dream, the old American dream, 40, was it 40 acres in a mule? That was every man's dream. Man, is it not still the same here today? And the mule is the equivalent of uh, one of these side-by-sides. You know, I, I just didn't know how handy these things were, but it's just indispensable. It's just my, become my right hand and so funny. And that would have been the same thing as a guy's mule back in the day, right? So I think the Kawasaki's, they've got their quads or their side-by-sides appropriately named when they name them the, the the mule it's uh with a little bit of ingenuity and using mechanical advantages and pulleys and such it's there's all sorts of possibilities a guy can do you know it's just um it's a fun thing it keeps your mind fresh and how to think about these things and how to solve problems and i'm just having a ball out here just having a ball so thanks for watching it's probably about all the time we have for today i'm going to get back to work out there we'll pick up where we left off next time and uh, thanks for watching. If you don't mind commenting and uh, taking a moment to click the thumbs, thumbs up, we always appreciate that. And may God bless you guys and your families. Keep us in your prayers. And we'll see you guys on the next video.